Captain Chaudhary in my series of videos on marine astronomical navigation. Today I'm going to talk about a very special part of this celestial astronomy and that is to find out what are the stars suitable for a particular type of observation. So we will first do the stars suitable for doing X meridian sight. First of all, a few things about the X meridian sight. X meridian sight is taken uh, in the situation where um, by mistake or by because of some other cause you miss out on meridian passage. A typical meridian passage site that is taken that used to be taken every day out at sea was uh, meridian passage of the sun. X meridian. Usually uh, a, a very simple thumb rule for finding out x meridian limits was L difference D equal to MZD equal to in time uh, whatever is MZD in degrees that many minutes of time used to be or is the meridian passage limit before or after meridian passage. I will explain you. This site had a greater importance in yesteryears because uh, just with the help of two tables we would uh, apply some correction and uh, the true zenit distance to find out equivalent meridional zenit distance from where declination is treated to find out the observed latitude through which the position line would be drawn. But in today's time X meridian site would take the same amount of time as long by crown as uh, intercept because everything is done by calculator. Okay, uh, I was talking about an X meridian site, you know, which was taken if we missed out on the meridian passage site. Now here today we are going to talk about the X meridian sites of star. Observer wants to know at a particular time like in this question it is stated that at the end of uh, nautical twilight in the evening. As you know all the twilights in the evening they start together and one by one they extinguish. Like for example when the sun is 6 degrees below uh, the civil twilight ends and when the sun is 12 degrees below the observer's rational horizon the nautical twilight ends. So it is at that moment you know that is the moment which is given in the almanac as LMT uh, of uh, nautical twilight. So at that particular time it is pointed out at that particular time an observer if he wants to take X meridian what are the stars suitable for X meridian. So whenever uh, we get a question like this at a particular moment uh, what are the stars suitable for uh, doing X meridian sight? How we proceed? We are going to discuss now. First of all, let me write down the question. At the end of PM nautical twilight on 4th March, end of PM nautical twilight on 4th March 92, find the stars, planets of magnitude. 1.8 and brighter magnitude 1.8 and brighter the stars and planet uh, which are suitable for X meridian site right so to proceed what we do is we uh, find out a lengthy uh, nautical twilight from the almanac you know as you know uh, in the evening it would be given when the sun is 12 degrees below the observer's rational horizon so it is uh, 1855 and we apply LIT to this and the position is uh, 40 degrees north, 100 degrees east. 40 degrees north, 100 degrees east. So for 100 degrees east, the LIT is 06 hours and 40 minutes. Longitude east, G least, so we minus it. So it becomes 1215 GMT. Right? So LMT I apply LIT against GMT 1215. Now for this 1215 GMT if I look into the almanac I get GH Aries. From the almanac I get GH Aries 342 degrees 30 minutes. 342 degrees 30 minutes. And then I apply increment 3 degrees 45.6 is the increment. So we get proper GH Aries that is uh, 346 degrees is the proper GH Aries 
to which I apply longitude of 100 degrees as you know 100 degrees east so G least so I will add 15.6 if it is more than 360 I am supposed to subtract 360 I get Zero eighty six fifteen point six. This is the LHA. Okay, now what do I conclude of this? This means that wherever the observer is, wherever the, suppose this is North Celestial Pole, I'm seeing from top, this is observer's meridian, wherever the observer is, uh, Aries is. 86 degrees 15.6 to the west so this is first point of Aries now what if I subtract this from 360 degrees so I get So, which means that this angle is 273 degrees, 44.4. Suppose there was a star, you know, whose SHA was 273 degrees, 44.4 minutes. That star would be on observer's meridian. So, this is what we do in every uh, calculation of this sort. Uh, we find out... From the almanac, we find out what is GH Aries, convert it into LH Aries, then 360 minus LH Aries gives me the SHA of the star which is on observer's meridian. Now, if I want to find out at a particular moment, at a particular moment, uh, the star should be within the X meridian limits, then what I have to do is, uh, I have found out this meridian that is of observer's meridian. I also know the SHA of the star which is on observer's meridian. Then what I do is uh, 17 degrees minus and 17 degrees plus from this SHA. So which means that there is a window I get 273 degrees 44.4 minutes minus 17 degrees 44.4. That is 256.40. 4.4 and the other side is 290 degrees 44.4 that means if we look at an SHA range from 256 degrees 44.4 till 290 degrees 44.4 you know these are the stars there is a possibility that uh, about say uh, the stars of magnitude 1.8 and brighter probably 10-15 uh, stars might be there in this range but out of those stars which stars are suitable for me I have to look at various things in respect of the star for example it should not be very low in altitude it should not be very high in altitude right uh, if it is very close to horizon or observers zenith that star uh, should not be taken then I also have to see that depending on the uh, declination of the star, you know, the meridional zenith distance is not very small. If the MZD, the meridional zenith distance is small, that means when the star crosses the meridian, it passes from very close to the observer's zenith. Naturally, the uh, x meridian limit of that star will be very poor. What I want to know at this moment, at this time that is given, what is the hour angle of the star and then what is the traveling time from that star to the observer's meridian if that traveling time is less than the x meridian limit that star is suitable for x meridian but if the star is so far away from the observer's meridian that the traveling time is more than the x meridian limit that means that star is not suitable for x meridian so i will list the stars according to the increasing order of SHA and then I will check one by one whether the star is suitable for X meridian or not. So uh, I will show you the list of the stars which I have uh, spotted from the nautical almanac you know 
there is the listing of the stars given in increasing order of SHA from there I have picked up the stars whose magnitude is 1.8 or brighter. Star Sirius is there whose SHA is 258 degrees 47.6. So this star is 14 degrees 56 minutes on the east of star that is on observer's meridian. That means the travel time of this star to the observer's meridian is 59.6 minutes of time. Whereas X meridian limit is only 53 minutes. So this star Sirius, you know, whose declination is 16 degrees 42 is outside the X meridian limit. Next we go to Canopus and the declination of the Canopus as you can see is 52 degrees 41.8 south. This star would be probably uh, suitable but it is outside the horizon, below the horizon. You won't be able to see this star. Next we come to Al Nilam. The declination is very small, 1 degree 12.5. Looks like it would have a good a range of uh, X meridian limits. Uh, our angle is just 2 degrees 18.1 minute. That means just 9 minute away from the observer's meridian. Whereas the X meridian limit is tremendous. That is 41 minutes. El Nath whose declination is 28 degrees 36.2 which makes the star come very close to the observer's zenith which means that zenith distance would be uh, rather small and this particular star you know the traveling time to meridian is 19.2 minutes what I do is uh, our angle divide by 15.04 you know multiplied by 60 that would give the travel time and this travel time happens to be a 19.2 minutes Whereas the X meridian limit is only 14. So I would say that this body is outside the X meridian limit. For the Bellatrix, you know, the declination is 6 degrees 20.5 minutes north, which means which makes the X meridian limit uh, about 38 minutes if we do L difference D. Whereas looking at the hour angle, that is 5 degrees 4.6 minutes, the star is only about 20.3 minutes away from the meridian. So this star is also suitable for X meridian. Capella, whose declination is 45 degrees 59.6 minute north, it makes the meridian passes very close to the observer's zenith, which means that the X meridian limit is only 10 minutes. Whereas depending on the hour angle, that is 7 degrees 13.6, it looks like the star is 28.8 minutes away from the meridian, which means the body is outside the X meridian limit. Next star is Rizil, whose declination is 8 degrees 12.7 minutes south. So if you consider 8 degrees south and observer's latitude is 40 degrees north, the meridional zenith distance should be something like 48. And because the hour angle of this star is just 7 degrees 42.9 minutes, which is uh, which indicates that the star is about 30 minutes away from the meridian. It makes the star suitable for X meridian. Next is Aldebaran, whose uh, declination is 16 degrees 29.7, making the uh, X meridian limit as about 25 minutes. Right? Whereas if you look at the hour angle, it is quite a bit, 17 degrees 23.3 minutes, which makes it about 69.4 minutes of time away from the meridian. That means this star is outside the X meridian limit. You can see how the table should be made and in the remarks column it should be stated whether the star is suitable, uh, whether the star is within the X meridian limit, whether the star is going to be above the horizon or the star would pass below the horizon. Also we should check whether the, the altitude of the star is within acceptable range. The star should not be very high in altitude. If it is very close to the observers then we avoid it. And if the star is very low, typically a uh, star with the altitude less than 15 degrees we do not take because the refraction correction uh, which is applied to the star may not be correctly or accurately known.